as we are moving on, we have to look at what has to do with the youth, the economic development, the life generally, how is life teaching them, and then what is the hope for them in the future. These are what we are going to be discussing today. We are going to be digging into Australian Youth Development Commission Bill. Establishment B 2020 that was recently passed by the State House of Assembly. And discussing with us is Mr. Bukolaido, the Executive Director, Kempa Development Initiative. He has been one of the advocates, one of the pioneers of this bill. We are there. And what are the benefits? What should people be looking towards? What benefit is this bill bringing to the tables of our youth in Osun? And more so, how will it not be impacted by economic, uh, you know, the financial aspect of it, the fund, the paucity of fund that is comforting the state? How would this not affect this bill? And the people at the grassroots, what is the hope? This is what we are going to be discussing on Insight Moments today. I am Jari Chiamiyu. Stay tuned, I'll be right back with my guests. Yeah, I come back from that very short break. As I said earlier, my guest is Mr. Bukolai Do, is the executive director of Kempat Development Initiative, an NGO in Osun State. Sir, you are highly welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Sir, what we are going to be discussing has to do with youth development in the state. And then we'll be specific about the uh, Osun State Youth Development Commission Establishment Bill 2020 that is still in the status of assembly. We'd like you to talk about, please, can you brief us about what this bill is all about? Well, Oshun um, Youth Development Commission Establishment Bill 2020 is basically to set up a commission that will oversee the youth and that we uh, be like an interface, an agency that interface between other ministries. Now, uh, we need to understand the genesis of this bill because when you um, understand, we'll be able to um, appreciate the bill. What happened is that we discovered that um, Oshun uh, has the, uh, the, the about over uh, 50 percent of the population of or let me just say 50 percent of the population of um, Oshun are mainly young people okay. youths now when you now look at that and you look at successive governments now attention given to the youth is not commensurate with that percentage that they should have for instance in the past administration you find out that um uh, uh, did we even have a stand alone ministry of youth that deal with the 50 percent of the population so for instance mm -hmm. now at some time during the governor of uh, um, during the era of Governor Eric Bechola, you have uh, Ministry of Youth and uh, Greek marched together at some point. They were marched together with um, um, science and technology. And so, so you, you don't even have a standalone uh, ministry. So what we are now looking at is that if a state have 50% of its population to be young people, then what do we need to do? We need to pick close attention to that. So we are not looking at um, a situation where you have a commission that will interface. At some point, when they were drafting the budget, I remember we went to uh, one of the ministries and um, we were now asking them, look, what the percentage of the youth um, in this particular budget, I mean, I'm talking about 2019 budget, is, is, is very, very minimal. It looks like it was only all years that was budgeted for. And the man said, look, um, uh, youth are all in all the ministries ministry. Okay, good. If youth are in all the ministry, ministry of agri, ministry of works, ministry of commerce, ministry of everything. So you now need an agency that will draw the component of ministry of youth, that will draw the component of ministry of agri, that will draw the component of ministry of commerce, pull them together and let the young people truly benefit from that. So that is the whole essence of the commission that will be a standalone commission. And one thing we need to understand is that because people ask that, oh, there is a youth ministry already. Yeah. Why why that? Now a, a governor, a governor can come and say, Look, I don't want Ministry of Youth again, like we have it in the past, and then we push it aside. Another governor can come and say, Look, the, he wants to merge ministries together. But when a commission is a commission is an is, is an establishment uh, made by the law, so it's it stand, you can't just come and uh, eradicate it. So you may need to go back to repeat yeah. that law that do that. So we want something that will be lasting, that will stand alone, that will be lasting, and we focus mainly on youth components. Now, where are we 
about the passage of the bill and the status of us. Well, I, I am I am glad. Last week we were we were rejoicing. I am glad that um, the um, House of Assembly has already passed the BDP. The bill went through the first reading, went to the commission. I mean, uh, uh, second reading went into the uh, committee stage. The bill has been finally passed now. So this the, the situation we are now is that we are waiting for the governor assent. So and when that is done, because um, the House of Assembly. Uh, Led by Honorable Timothy, sure. where he really actually did a great work uh, to see that pass. And then what we are now looking at is that we are expecting the governor, which any moment we understand that as soon as that is being transmitted then to the governor, uh, that we are expecting him to sign the, that. Okay, now let's now uh, bring it back to the community. I mean, the streets. Can you tell us how the effects of this uh, bill, if it is passed into law and it has been passed, if it is assented by the governor? Can you tell us the effects on? I'm not talking about only the lettered youth. I'm talking about the artisans on the streets, the Okada riders, the shoemakers, every other person. I'm talking about the two categories. How would this bill affect them positively? Yes, we are looking at a, a particular a commission that we have representative across all strata of community on the board. So you are having um, NGO that's going to be on the board. You are having the ministry people that's going to be on the board. You are having technocrats. You are also having a representative of the youth, student, everybody on the board that we cater for each of those uh, uh, communities you've mentioned about. You mentioned. Now, one thing we need to also understand is that what we have presently is... Um, is most times we, we look at when opportunity comes, when budget comes, when the budget comes, and then we look at, okay, the budget is not enough for uh, what's, I mean, the allocation is not enough, or the release of the fund is not enough for everybody. So then they begin to ration it. And then it's possible that in a whole year, in a whole budget year, the Ministry of You might not even do anything that will affect the youth uh, directly. So what we are now looking at is that a commission now that we focus because the commission also have by the Law that established had the powers to raise private fund, to go into and raise fund and look into the community. See, by the last analysis, we are looking at this particular B in two years to create like about hundred thousand jobs. So that is what we are looking at, and that is going to have hundred thousand jobs. jobs in two years. That is what we are looking at. And then we are also looking at the ripple effect. Now, the issue is this. Now, you look at this beautiful uh, studio. Now, where we are. Now, what it means is that the moment you are being touched by the uh, media component the commission brought in, let's just assume okay. that now, now money is being pushed or uh, grant is being given or help is being given or bailout is being given. Now, what you have is that you employ more youth. Now, the youth also now begin to do something, now begin to fulfill their dream and say, okay, I want to start my own business. I employ more youth. When you look at the old years we are presently, sometimes Governor Eric Bechola told us that some of the old years are also building houses and some of them are also having their own business when they finish. Yes. Now, that is the ripple effect we need to begin to look into. So, this is a B that by the establishment, we touch every member of the youth, including the student out of school, um, or kind of riders, everybody. Okay, we'll go on a very short break now, but when we come back, we have to talk about the stakeholders' engagement. How has that been? I mean, you know, you've talked about uh, the students now. You know, they are very, very uh, important components when we talk about the youth. And then other stakeholders that are involved. How are we going to ensure that this commission is not short of funds? Because when it comes to that, every other matter that we are discussing, when it comes to funds, that is exactly the bone of contention. So, please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yeah, welcome back from that very short break. My guest once more is Mr. Bukolai Dogu. He's the Executive Director of Kempat Development Initiatives in Oshogbo. He's an NGO that has been working on different uh, strata of life. I'm talking about election, uh, education, you know, rural area development, and every other aspect that uh, we can't be mentioning here. But he has been doing fantastic work. What we are discussing once more is Osun State Youth Development Commission Establishment Bill that was passed by the State House of Assembly last week. We are trying to x-ray what and what are the benefits of this bill. Mr. Idowu, 
Let's now talk about the stakeholder engagement. You talked about the youth, uh, the students, uh, and some other aspects. I'm, th I'm, I'm talking about this, you know, there, there was a time when we had uh, carnivals, every other, you know, the grooves in the rural areas. How are these people being carried along? And then the awareness that there is a bill, that's a commission that is going to be established very soon, and then this commission will cater for the lives of the youth. How are these uh, the engagements? Going? Well, uh, thank you for that question. I think um, what we did was to have a robust engagement before we even get to where we are. And when I say robust engagement, you see, on our show youth agenda, uh, that eventually gave back to this bill and they now begin to work with the State House of Assembly. We had over, like about 600 volunteers working on it. And across then the across the state. And then before then, we also have like about 35 local government of who were actually working. Now, what we did before the, we got to this level was that we were able all the local government uh, hub coordinators, I mean, we call them local government coordinators now, who are popularizing this in every local government. That is number one. Number two, all the local government hub were able to meet their representatives. So, okay. one on one, we met with all the 26 members of the House of Assembly to explain to them, this is what it is, this is what it is. Now, at that, at the level of Kimpat, we also met with the young people, uh, young uh, legislator, legislator in our office. Now, having said that, a lot of advocacy, a lot of um, speaking to people, we met traditional rulers, we met um, leaders of thought, we met um, um, policy makers, and everybody was was contacted. And then we also now had like about two um, high stakeholders uh, policy dialogue. I, I mean, high stakeholders. Who is who? There was one we have. We even have the deputy governor there. The speaker was there. Um, everybody was there. So it was a robust engagement. And having said that, now. What we now need to do again is that we are not we need to continue. I, I won't say the whole state is aware, okay. but we need to continue the engagement now to make sure that um everybody is buying into this, everybody is supporting this so to make it work. Now, in coming to issue of fund, the bill itself is making provisions now for a percentage of um um, from the local government deduction and a whole lot of things that are likely going to be funded it and beyond that greater percentage of the money is going to even come from the private sector okay. now, so it's not going to cost the government a fortune in fact like we keep saying you don't even need to keep recruiting you can re you can reallocate reassign staff from that to the commission and again when you go to Abiri for instance now let me even use the White House for instance you have a lot of offices that are not being used now they can start from they, they, you don't need to build the house, you have the staff, you can only use the only people you only need to recruit are just the board. So, with everything has been done, putting into consideration the financial situation of the state. And then, so when you now have a full fledged board, a commission that can actually even write the US, that can even write embassy, that can even write a private establishment that say, look, this is what we want to do for our young people. Now, please support us in that regard. And then, there, there we go. And then, so what we need is just the government to, to, to I mean, the governor to sign this, and then we, we need to see changes in, in, in the economy of the state. Oh, that's a very good uh, plan. I, I remember very sure that uh, considering the fact that even we have people that come that have the knowledge about that is going to work and that's exactly where I want to pick my next question we've seen a lot of commissions let's take it from motion to federal level now a lot of agencies in fact there is a time when they say there is a proliferation of agencies now and these agencies are not working they are not doing what exactly the law that created them supposed has given them the mandate is given to them. Are we going to be sure that this will not join the league of these agencies? That it is going to be working effectively. It's not going to be a politician, you know, you know how politicians can do. They can just be taking slots and be given into their, you know, their board members or their political associates. Are we going to ensure that it's getting to the grassroots? I can I can assure us that this is not going to uh, be one of those commissions because um with the frame with the look of things with the way the, the the commission is framed you are having representative of the youth and uh, the national youth council you are having the student you are having the ngo you are having the um i mean i mean um the technocrats and everybody so it is not the politician affair if in fact what we are looking at is that you have minimum 
politicians there. And that is why even when we were even looking, when they were even looking at the board, I, I, like, I mean, the, the State House of Assembly did wonderfully well pruning that particular bill. When they were even looking, one of the, the things is that even it's either the, the commissioner or the director that would be on the board. Because in a situation where um, the governor have not appointed the commissioner, the board is still running because a director will, will, will move into that place. So it is so it is a robust thought. And when people are saying, oh, hope this will not go the way of other commissions that are not um, effective. Yes. But we are also saying this is likely going to go in the way of the commission, other commission that are effective because we are going to drive it. Young people are going to drive it. They are going to hone the process and make it work. So it's not going to be dormant at all because youth issues are coming up every day and they have a lot to do to get to make that work so the most important thing is people to take ownership of the young people to take ownership of it make it work and then it's going to work okay uh, lastly let's now talk about uh what i tag uh the ripple effect as you have just said but let's talk about the people at the grassroots I'm so most concerned about them because if you go to Egbedi, go to all those uh, local areas, the villages, you realize that they are not being carried along. Most of activities that are happening, and that is exactly why Osubo is becoming too much populated and other state capitals across the country. So how are we going to ensure that these people, they are very, very active when this well, the, the, the first thing I, I need to talk about on that bill is this the bill i think the bill it is called Oshun youth development commission b not Oshun or ban youth development commission b so it is Oshun. it is robust it is for so far Egbedi, um it are local wherever we are mentioning so far they are part of Oshun. then is this this bill is the, the commission is meant to take care of everybody and how do we do that and that is by making sure that this commission is not a politician affair yeah. and that is number one now i tell you there was a time somebody came to this i mean a, a, an organization came to a show here and want to run a, a training a digital training for like about um 300 youth across all the local government across all the local government these are the work of the commission to go through all the local government go through the new training pull the young people together for that digital training that will make them to be able to compete with their peers abroad. So we are looking at a commission. Now, whether you like it or not, you will notice that um, uh, Ocean Job Center has, represent, uh, has representation in all the local government. Yes. This is the same thing the commission is going to do. Work with all the local government, harvest youth need, look at what is peculiar in um, Obok local government, for instance, look at what is peculiar in Uriade local government, for instance, harvest them together, look and uh, match it with the supply uh, uh, value chain for either from the private sector or from the government and then push it to where it is being needed not where it is just going to go and score a political point because the youth of this state must grow and then we must develop Thank you so much. The youth of this state must grow and we must develop. That's a very uh, good conclusion. That's a very wonderful place to conclude. My guest once more is Mr. Ido, Mr. Bukola Ido, is the executive director of Kempa Development Initiative and then is the pioneer of this awesome youth Development Commission Establishment B 2020 that was recently passed by the State House of Assembly. Mr. Ido, thank you for speaking to us. We thank appreciate you so much, all this and we hope that as it is going on, we'll be carried along and every other person will get to know more sure. about it. Sure. Thank you so much for that. That was a wonderful session with Mr. Bukolai Dugu, the Executive Director, Kempa Development Initiative in Oshun. He has been able to tell us what this bill has to do with and then what is it bringing to the tables of the youth in Oshun, as I said earlier. And more so, how will it not going to be a hampered? I mean, the activities of the Commission, how will it not be hampered by the economic and then the paucity of funds that we are confronting with in the state. That is a very wonderful one. And the people of the state of Washington are looking forward to the bill. As it is going on, we are going to be updating you. We are going to keep you abreast of the activities of this commission when it starts. We are waiting for the governor to, you know, ascend the bill. And when he ascends the bill, 
part of the activities, how it's going to start, we are going to be part and parcel of it in order to ensure that people of the state are carried along. That's a very wonderful one. Before I sign out today, I would like to say a, very, a shout out to one of our subscribers who is celebrating his birthday today. Uh, Ibrahim, Kodri Ibrahim and Novake is a very good colleague from uh, Elbow State. Please, we celebrate you, my brother. You are doing well. Well done, sir. Please then sure we are going to settle the matter where we meet. Thank you. This is some other time where we meet again. I am Jare Tami. You are my crew member. Ha Ido Uba Midele Mayawa Jare Sai Zakaria and Fatima. Well done. Thank you for working with me. See you some other time.